Hi everyone, I'm Chibi Yuto, and you're listening to Clamp Talk. So, hello. What is this Clamp Talk? Well, I've been wanting to do a podcast. For a very long time, and I've been postponing the idea because it's such a difficult thing to do, and especially when you're doing it on your own. So I've been lingering, lingering, but、um, I've always wanted to do that. I think it's an interesting way of communicating, apart from. Uh, the other、uh, channels that I have,、uh, such as the Live Journal and recently my Facebook and Tumblr as well. So I think it's a quite interesting, fun, and different experience to talk about Clamp, because that's what I love to do. So a podcast or、uh, an audio show—I don't know how you can call it—an audio program. It's a new way of doing that, and I hope you enjoy it.、Um, I don't know how how often I will do this because, like I said, it's very very complicated and very time consuming. But hopefully,、uh, as time goes by, I will get better and more, and and it will get easier to to make those those programs. And also, it depends on how much you guys like it. And how good of a feedback I have on this、uh, podcast—you can call it like that.、Um, I did a pilot for this clam talk last year. I was in Canada with a friend of mine, and she's a, also a very big fan of clam. Her name is Marianne, and I was in her house, and we, we just started talking about clam, and we were near her. Clam collection. It was very fun because、uh, the the talk just went by very easy. We had no script whatsoever because we were very inspired. I think we, because we were in a room where、um, she kept she keeps all her stuff, all her clam stuff. So it was very easy. Um. So for this show, for this one, this is officially number one. The episode one, let's call it like that. Well,、um, I I didn't introduce myself very well because I think if you are listening to this, you probably know my live journal or my Facebook page or my Tumblr. Well, I'm Chibi Yuto, and、uh, I run a a live journal about clamp. Um, basically, I post news and、uh, sometimes reviews and anything clamp related. Really, I've been doing this for almost well on Live Journal for almost nine years, but overall for ten、um, years now because I started in two thousand three. But anyway, I just wanted to briefly introduce myself here in case you you don't know who the hell I am. <laughs> But probably you know, because you're listening to this anyway.、Uh, so thanks for listening. I hope that you're gonna like it, and I hope、uh, we're gonna have a good time here talking about clamp. So for this first episode,、um, I've put up a question on Facebook, on my Facebook, and on my Tumblr. Account、uh, asking you guys what you, what you would like me to talk about here to come up with some ideas and some topics for me to elaborate about and、um, there are a few very very interesting、uh, suggestions so I, I've selected a few of them and I'm going to talk about them、uh, on this episode. Thanks for submitting your questions, by the way, and your topics.、Um, they make me very glad. <laughs> so、um, I thought I should start with 
a question that probably a lot of people are wondering and have been asking themselves and I just want to say that I am not clamp myself of course I don't have any kind of um, inside informations basically everything I know I put on the live journal well not everything but almost everything and um, so what I'm saying here I'm just basically talking about things that have been already released or published somehow or things that are known uh, publicly I'm not I'm not going to do any kind of you know scoop inside scoop because I don't have that so that's why I, I'm talking I'm talking this because the this first question was submitted by uh, a user called Harlem I Mizuki uh, from Facebook the question is do Clamp have any intention to continue their hiatus manga like Clover and X well, the short and true answer will be yes. Uh, especially for X, I would say, and this is me personally saying that more for X and a bit less for Clover, because for Clover, um, yes, they do. They they would they would like to continue. They would like to to draw the final two volumes because for those who don't know, that are. Uh, two volumes left for Clover. Uh, they said that on the Clamp no Kiseki interview, the Clamp no Kiseki uh, volume 2, where uh, it talks about Clover and there's a Clamp interview, and they said that they would like to, they would really like to draw the final two stories of the manga, but they don't know if that could happen. And what I'm saying is that they're keeping Clover in the bottom drawer and they will probably going to pick it up when opportunity comes that means they are not putting it on a on their priority list but yes they would love to continue one day and to give it a proper ending uh but there are they have other um goals right now i would say so for clover um it's a bit more complicated but then again that's my opinion about it. Uh, regarding X, the last time they talk about X was, uh, I think, on um, their um, Paris appearance uh, on Japan Expo, and people talked about, it, people asked about it, and they they said that yes, they they definitely want to to draw it and to finish it, but there are some. Uh, Editorial issues behind X, and I've, well, I myself, I have contacted the publisher a few times in the past. I, I've sent emails to Kadokawa asking them about X, and the answer they gave me is that they have been talking to Clamp, they have been through negotiations, but they still have not come came up with um, with an agreement to publish it. But Clamp has um, expressed their wish to to finish the series in on many many occasions, and they have literally uh, guaranteed that they will finish it, even if that's the last thing that they will do. And like for Clover, I think they have other priorities at the moment. Like they must be so excited with the new works that they have been working on that they put X aside a little. And well, they have they had been working in on X for more than ten years, so maybe this could be some sort of vacation for them. I do remember reading an interview where they said that once X was finished, they would take some vacations. So maybe that's their vacation, not from uh, being manga cast, but but for for X, if you know what I mean. Um, but you know, there's there's um, there's a lot of editorial issues because they don't have a proper magazine to run X right now, and it has to be a magazine from Kadokawa because X is from Kadokawa. So um, they need to to have a, um, a magazine that it's fit for X, and 
we know that with all the gruesome enacts and all the violence, um, it's not uh, any magazine that could run it. So right now they are probably um, looking for a magazine. That's what the publisher told me on the emails that I've sent. Uh, in fact, it would be a very, very good idea if you guys could uh, send emails as well to Kadokawa asking about X. I think if more people do it, chances are that um, we might see the, the conclusion of X sooner. Um, it is kind of difficult just to write Kadokawa because um, it's all in Japanese, the website and the forms. But you could do... Um, your best with Google Translator or you can ask for a friend of yours who might know Japanese so good luck with that and I hope that together we can bring X back okay so the next topic comes from a very good friend of mine her name is um, Shido Hikaru I call her Hikichan as well. Um, she asked me to talk about clamp drawing style. But what I found interesting about her idea is that she she, she says clamps clamp drawing style changes, improvements and decays. That that last word decays really made me um uh, pick this question, pick this topic because Whenever we talk about clamp, well, for me at least, it's always the good things. It's always the the um, how awesome they are, how very talented they are, and anyway, I tend to talk about the good things about clamp. But they have bad things as well. But of course, the good things overcome the bad things. But they do they do have bad things, and the decay on drawing style really triggered me to talk about um, and I immediately thought of drag and drop when I read that because of course uh, we know that there are some there, there are always changes in, in drawing style they have been ever since they started drawing there have been changes in their art and there will there will be uh, there will, they will forever be because and, you know they are trying different works and different techniques so it's bound to happen and it's really beautiful to see how um, their art changes and I think the the greatest example of that is X because you can see it from the very early volumes to the very uh, late volumes you can see the progress and you know all the changes and you can see the influences from their other works um, like uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth and Cardcaptor Sakura and um, Chobits there was a very very heavy influence in, of Chobits and Angelic Layer and, and, and so on and it's really beautiful to see that um, so back to the topic of the DKs um, I think the greatest example for me at least was Drag and Drop I was and I still am extremely disappointed with the the current art style from Drag and Drop, formerly known as um, Goho Drug. I used to love Goho Drug Goho Drug's art, and I still do. I mean, the the, the first three volumes that uh, is about where the the series was, was still called Go, Goho Drug, and it was just so beautiful. Um, especially on the second volume. First volume was very interesting. It was such a difference if you compare to to um, Suki Takarasuki, which was Nikoi's former work before working on Koho Drug. And it was just so beautiful, and I loved it. And I remember that the, the art, for me, reached its climax on volume 2. That, for me, was the best. Then... On volume 3, there was a bit of a downgrade, I think because because Nikoi was starting to draw Holic, and I'm not saying that the art of Holic is bad, please, please do not think that, but I think that um, 
because the art is simpler in Holic, and Goho Drug's art was more complex, so there was a bit of a mixture between that and I think it confused Nikoi a bit, I don't know. But it was still good, far better than Drag and Drop. Drag and Drop, for me, it looks almost like a different thing, and I almost can't recognize it as a clamp work sometimes. It's just so simple. And I think the biggest difference is the, the tracing. The stroke is a lot thicker, not that thin, you know, and because of that, you miss a lot of the details. Because the stroke being thicker, you have to um, get rid and and sacrifice the details because they the details you cannot draw details with um, a thick stroke. And I don't know why they decided to go on that road um, maybe because the magazine that it's been running right now which is Young Ace from Kadokawa maybe because it's a shonen magazine so they they wanted to give a more shonen look but it looks um, quite comical and not very mysterious because Go Drug and Drug and Drop it's supposed to be a series about suspense and mystery and I don't know the 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 art style right now looks more comic than mysterious to me so but a lot of people like that and I really find it interesting because some people when I talk about it they 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 tell me no what are you talking about the art is it's it's great I almost cannot see the difference and it really um, surprises me because for me the difference is so clear and it's not in a good way I, I don't see it as an improvement quite the contrary I would say it, it's um, a downgrade it's a decade uh, and I keep I keep hoping that it will get better with time but it's it doesn't seem to be happening <laughs> for my own disappointment because I really love the series, the story and it's so difficult for me to read it so there you go I I do think that there are major improvements in when it comes to talk about clamp art and changes of course because they have to try different styles for different series and um, so one style ends up influencing the other and and then it's the the change is is just a a consequence so it happened in the past and it will keep happening and it's really interesting to watch that um it's this topic about the clamp art style is so huge and so um, vast i could talk about it for over and over and for hours so I think I'm going to talk about this more on uh, the upcoming episodes of this Clamp Talk. Very interesting topic to, to talk about the DKs, not just the, the good thing about the Clamp art. So thank you, Hikaru-san. Okay, so the next topic comes from a user from Tumblr called uh, Vengli Mink. I'm not sure if, her, if I pronounced that right, I'm sorry. Um, about the influence of Clamp in other manga and anime. Hmm, I am not sure I can talk about this. I've been thinking about it, but... Well, it's a bit difficult for me because... To be honest, I don't really read or watch other manga and other anime apart from Clamp. I've been just uh, I've been reading just Clamp for for years now, and but uh, sometimes it does happen that uh, a manga or a anim an anime 
catch my attention and I give it a try, but it's really rare these days. So for me, it's it's very very difficult to talk about that because I don't have any sort of background and I don't have any sort of base to talk about this. Um, and I think maybe it's too soon for that. I think Clump it's is too classify as new mangakas. I mean, they have, of course, 20 years, uh, almost 25 years of, of, of career, but um, there are many, many other uh, older mangakas out there that people look up to. And I think that the, the mangakas that will look up to Clamp, they are still um, children right now, or they will become mangakas in the future and they will um, get their influence from Clamp. So maybe you, you guys could um, let me know if you notice some manga or some uh, anime that seems to be um, influenced by Clamp. It would be very interesting for me to see that because I don't think I, I've ever seen it or maybe I'm not remembering that. Well, I do tend to see clamp everywhere so sometimes I see uh, some cherry blossoms and I see oh that's so clamp but not really I mean clamp did not invent the cherry blossoms floating in the air but it's a very clampy thing so it's very difficult for me just to 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 point out and say okay this this is being influenced by clamp so I would love to hear from you guys and and maybe I could check it out. So the next topic comes from another user from Tumblr called Neko Kitty Cat. That's a very cool nickname, by the way. Um, it says, "What influences the clothing style for each series?" So I'm I'm assuming the question is about what are Clamp's influences for for the clothing styles for each series? Hmm. I don't have a um, full information about this, but I do have a few about a few uh, information for this. I do remember reading uh, an interview where Okawa said that for for Card Capture Sakura, it was particularly difficult and fun at the same time. I remember she said that she would see magazines, fashion magazines, and get ideas for the clothes and for Sakura's costumes um, that supposedly were um, uh, designed by Tomoyo. And she would, Okawa, I mean, she would draw uh, sketches of, of, of the, uh, the, the clothes, the, the, the costume, and would give it to Mokona. And then Mokona would uh, draw it properly. So for Cat Cat Sakura, it was fashion magazines. Um, the, then we have drug, uh, Goho Drug, that was heavily influenced by the underground culture. I also remember reading an interview where Nekoi said that she was very into this underground punk. Well, I'm not sure if punk is right, but. Anyway, this, uh, you know, rings and collars and uh, bracelets and tattoos. So that's where the influence, the influence for, for Goho Drug comes from, for clothes, I mean. Very interesting as well, but I'm not sure if I was very helpful. I would also love to know the other influences for Clump, for where they get their ideas for drawing so many clothes, because they do have a very great sense of fashion those ladies which brings me to the next topic that was kindly suggested by a facebook user called jenny lee delorfano gary again i am not sure if that is uh, pronounced correctly i do apologize um who asked who asked me thoughts on if they started a clothing line hmm that would be super cool and i think Pretty much everyone has wondered that already, because they have so such a big talent for for drawing clothes, and they're so stylish. I really don't know why they haven't done it yet. 
I think it would be very um, interesting, of course, being a clamp fan, that, that would be so cool, and it would be very great to wear a cloth, a piece of cloth that was uh, designed by clamp. Maybe there are some very complicated issues uh, involved in that, or maybe they don't feel quite secure to do that yet, because, you know, uh, Japanese people, they tend to be not very... Um, sure about themselves and they have they 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 have a lot of self criticism so maybe they, they don't feel confident enough for that but i think they would do great and maybe uh they are just too busy with other stuff and they don't want to go into that yet but i think that i wouldn't really um trash this idea i think that it just could so happen in the future because, well, they have designed a wedding dress that was inspired in Cardcaptor Sakura. I think that it was for a, um, a wedding dress fair in 2012. I'm not sure it, about the year, but it was a few years ago. And, okay, um, I did not like the dress that much. I think it was very weird for a wedding dress and kind of um, childish. But you know, it's a first. It's a first step. They could, um, they could be thinking about that, about going serious into that um, uh, area and that field. And I think they would be very successful. They have very good taste for that, um, in spite of the wedding dress. Uh, particularly, I like Tachibana's clothes. I really like it. Them actually. And from Gate Seven, if you look at Gate Seven and you 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 look at um, the, the outfits worn by Tachibana, they're very very my style. I really like it. He wears like um, cool shoes and shirts and suits, sometimes ties. That's very very um, stylish. Well, Tachibana is stylish, so it comes with a package, I guess. So for me. Um, that's that's what I would like to wear. That's the kind of of outfits that I would like claim to draw for a uh, uh, their own clothing line. But you know, Clamp, they are not just a mangaka group. They are more of like a creative group right now. So they have been working on different um, areas, not just drawing manga. So maybe they do see in the future. Uh, the possibility of drawing clothes that would be very interesting okay so the next topic um, comes from Shido Hikaru-san as well the same person who suggested me to talk about the clamp the changes in clamp's drawing style and this one is about um, clamp and music so, hmm, it was just like that, you know, the, the, that's the way she wrote it, clamp plus music, no more, no further description, so I will just elaborate on what I think she meant by that. Well, it's very interesting because I get, I got to, to know a lot of new music thanks to clamp, because of all their, um, music like their um, animes um, opening themes and ending themes so I, I got to know a lot of artists like Maya Sakamoto and Ali Project Suga Shikao, um and a bunch of them so thanks to them I was able to know these other amazing artists and for me uh, the two artists that I was very, very thankful to Clamp was Maya Sakamoto and Suga Shikao. Um, for Maya, I really like her. I listen to her like on a daily basis. I was just listening to, to her latest tour today. Um, and it's just so impressive. It, it's very impressive how the live version of their, their song, of her songs, seems very it sounds very 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 accurate and very similar to the studio album to the studio version of the song 
and that's something that you don't see all the time with uh, live versions you always have uh, a slight difference between the studio version and the live version you know the voices the voice is different the instruments uh, are different it sounds different sometimes that it's cool i don't i don't deny that i like when the live version is a bit different so i'm not saying that it's a good thing or a bad thing that Maya Sakamoto's live songs sounds very similar to the studio version. I'm just saying that it's impressive because I can imagine how hard it is to to make it sound the same. And you know, she brings her not just a, a simple band on stage with her, not just drums and guitar. No, she brings like a whole orchestra with her, with violins and you know other instruments and uh, some backing vocals, some very very nice backing vocals. So all that together really makes a very 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 faithful uh, version of of her songs and she's just very talented so I'm very thankful for Clamp for introducing me to Maya Sakamoto and also for Sugesh Kao I haven't listened to, to him in quite a while I was uh, very addicted to him back when I first knew him when the Holic anime you know, they started, and the, the movie as well. And so I, I used to listen to him, like, all the time. But then I got a bit um, tired of him, <laughs> so I put him aside for a while. But I still like him very much, and I still um very thankful for Clamp for introducing him to me. I think he's a great composer and great musician. Uh, I'm just not... In, in, a, in a phase where I want you to listen to his music but I do recognize he's a very very talented guy and I think there's no better person to sing holic songs other than Suga, Suga Shikawa. There were also other artists that I other songs that I, I I've got to know because of Clamp. There was uh, Yui as well uh, Yui, uh, she no longer performs as Yui. She has a new project. I don't remember the name right now. Um, but uh, she used to perform as Yui. Um, and I got to know Yui because there was one, t one time where Okawa made a post on her private board saying that she was listening to a Yui song, Cherry. The name of the song is Cherry while she was working on the script of a uh, Kobato chapter and she said that Yui was perfect to, to listen to whenever she was writing Kobato because of the, f uh, the feeling that she felt when listening to, to, to Yui and I can totally see that Yui is such a sweet sweet girl and uh, her songs are full of innocence and uh, and they're very and she's very talented as well because she writes all of her songs and she plays the guitar very, very nicely. So it's funny because I, Yui never played for a Clamp anime, but I got to know Yui because of Clamp somehow. Because, you know, I was curious to, to listen to that song. When I read the post, I wanted to, to, to find out what kind of music that was that Okawa used to listen to uh, when she was writing Kobato. I wanted to see how how much song inspired her. And what was the, the, the soundtrack of Kobato, let's put it that way. And after I listened to Cherry by Yui, I I liked it and I, I went to, to to grab some more songs and, and to try her other songs and and it turned out that I, I fell in love with her as well. So I'm very thankful to Clump as well because of that. So that's it for now for this episode. Thank you very, very much for listening. If you've come this far, I'm very thankful. I don't know when the next one's going to be out, 
uh, probably when I, whenever I feel inspired to do it. So keep sending your questions and your suggestions. I really like them. Thank you very much for submitting them. Um, I don't. I didn't have time to talk about all of them, but I did save them all, and I will talk about them in future episodes if they ever see the light of the day. <laughs> um, well, if you want to stay updated with Clamp's activities, make sure to visit shibiuto.livejournal.com and also my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash shibiuto.lj LJ is short for Live Journal. And you can also follow me on Tumblr, which is uh, the address is chibiuto.tumblr.com. Um, make sure to follow either the Facebook page, to like the Facebook page, or to follow the, the Tumblr, because I do um, sometimes post small news and tidbits that I wouldn't post on Live Journal, but um, they're not big enough for Live Journal, but they're still interesting stuff, so I only post, post them on Facebook and on Tumblr. So, um, just uh, as a tip, pick one, the, the whatever you prefer, and, and follow it, because uh, that way you can get fully in touch with what's, with what's happening in the Clamp universe. Uh, I know this uh, 2013 has been a very very quiet year for Clump. We had just uh, got the news that Gate 7 is on hiatus, which is pretty bad, I know. But I'm very very positive that it will be resumed soon, um, because Clamp has not stopped going to Kyoto for um, location hunts to take pictures and to do some more research. So they wouldn't be doing that if they didn't plan to resume the series uh, sometime soon. So please be a bit more patient with them. Uh, I'm sure they, they, they have been planning a lot for us. Uh, those ladies, you know, they, they never rest. So even when they seem to be quiet, they must be planning on something new for us to entertain us. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing this again sometime soon and please leave your thoughts uh, I would love to hear them and thank you and let's spread the clamp love okay see you <laughs>